Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to another video of Needy with Franco and welcome to the day six of our sourdough masterclass. Yesterday we had a look at another feeding and I told you to feed your starter when it would have tripled in size. So have a look at my starter. It's perfectly tripled in size. I already removed the cling film which was on the top. And since it's tripled in size, I'm gonna show you again another feeding. So we're going to proceed as usual by doing another feeding. But this time, at the end of the feeding, I'm gonna show you another technique, which is the lamination and the rolling. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna explain a brand new way to maintain our sourdough starter. Here we go, let's uh, uh, proceed with the feeding as usual as we did already every day. So let's let's put another clean container on top of the scale, let's reset it, let's take our sourdough starter, let's remove the top, which is oxidized. But as you can see, the consistency, the texture of this started changing a little bit. It's almost a sponge inside and if you smell it, it should smell very good this time. It shouldn't be that uh, um, acidic anymore. So let's get rid of the of the uh, top part of our sourdough because it's oxidized. Let's use a spoon and let's measure 100 grams of sourdough starter from the center, from the heart of the container, which is the part of which is less contaminated. Let's make sure to Put inside the container 100 grams we are already at 91 let's take another 10 grams 9 grams to arrive at uh, 100 let's use two spoons because at this face it's a little bit sticky we are at 97 two more grams and we're done that's it, we are 101 and this is perfectly fine. As usual, now let's clean this container because we're gonna store it in here uh, with uh, just warm water. Let's avoid soap at all times. Uh, but before we do that, let's reset the scale. Let's uh, use some warm, uh, we don't have to use any more any warm water. Uh, the water that we're going to use, which is 45 grams, to use a hydration of 45%, doesn't have to be that warm. It could be just that room temperature is gonna be just fine. Let's pour the water inside the container until it measures 45 grams. Slowly, like that, until it reaches 45. 43, 44, that's it, we reached 45. Let's now clean the container and let's proceed by measuring 100 grams of strong flour. Measure 100 grams of strong flour in Manitoba, or equivalent with a W of 360, 380. Let's measure 101. 98. 101, that's perfect. Let's now start kneading with a fork. And this process is always the same. The only thing that is gonna change with this face is gonna be the lamination, which I'm gonna show you in a bit. So now let's proceed by mixing the water with the flour. Let's make sure that the water is all absorbed. That's why we're using the fork to facilitate the process of mixing because our compound is a little bit sticky at the moment, which is absolutely fine because we just mixed the water with the flour. So when the water is all absorbed, or pretty much all of it is absorbed, then at that point we can proceed by using our hands. And I'm gonna move on to the countertop because it's gonna be much, much easier. And uh, today we're gonna use a little bit more of the countertop anyway, because um, as I said, I'm gonna show you how to do a new process, which is, which is gonna be the lamination and the rolling. Let's remove uh, some excessive starter which got stuck to the inside of the container. It was totally fine because again it was a little bit sticky because of the water. Let's move it onto the countertop so we can knead using our hands. Let's move it aside. Now let's start kneading it as if it was just a regular dough. 
So let's mix it until almost smooth. And I'm saying almost because at this phase we want also to laminate a little bit the dough. And I'll explain the reason why we want to do this in a second. So let's keep on mixing. Like this. To make the dough smooth. And some, there is some extra flour on the countertop. Let's just push it inside our compound, just like that, in order to absorb it all. One thing that I forgot to mention is that everything has to be super clean. When you're dealing with sourdough, every surface where you are kneading, every surface or every tool that you're using has to be super, super clean. It's best if you don't use any soap at all just to clean the surfaces where you're using your sourdough. When you have to knead it, just use warm water so we preserve the good bacteria responsible to make our sourdough uh, strong. Now, when we reach pretty much this point and our sour, our sourdough created, we, we, we created with this dough sort of a bowl. Let's push the bowl like this. And at this point, since it's gonna be a little bit sticky, let's sprinkle just a little bit of flour. Now I'm going to proceed by showing you the process of the lamination. Let's sprinkle a little bit of flour the top and on the bottom. Now we're going to need a rolling pin because we're going to need to laminate our dough. So let's start stretching our dough like this. The very first thing that we want to do is to create some sort of a rectangle with the rolling pin which should be thick more or less two centimeters. So in this face this is the only thing that we want to do. This is, this is this part is a little bit thicker than two centimeters, so let's uh, proceed a little bit further by stretching it. And when it's thick enough, two centimeters, let's proceed the lamination by doing two foldings. One and two, so we fold it in three. We created this sort of rectangle now, so we now have to keep on stretching the dough with the rolling pin Falling, following the direction of the folding, just like I'm doing now. Keep on stretching it in the direction of the folding, just like that. Let's stretch it like this. Now, what we want to do is to fold it again in three just like this. Here's another, let's sprinkle a little bit of more flour to facilitate the process. Not too much, like I did. Now, what you have to do is to create again a rectangle, but this time you want to get a stripe of dough. So let's fold it. Let's keep on stretching it. Create a rectangle and then let's fold it in half. Just keep stretching this from this side and from the other side. Just like that. Like this. When it's uh, pretty much like this, let's fold it for the last time in half like this and this is where the rolling part comes in so what you want to do now uh, you want to have a stripe of dough like in this case I'm having here you want to keep on stretching it and you want to make it thinner this time like one centimeter or 1.5 centimeter and I want to point out here that the foldings are necessary to give strength to our dough and to incorporate more air, which is going to help our sourdough to double and triple in size, obviously, because it's going to contain more air inside. Now roll the dough bit by bit, stretch it and roll it bit by bit, like I'm essentially doing here. 
So make it thin there this time. One centimeter is enough. One, 1.5 centimeter. And if you don't have a super long countertop, like in my case, what you want to do is to start rolling it bit by bit. So for example, start from here, let's roll it up until this side, and then let's keep on rolling. Stretch and roll. Just like this. From time to time, let's make sure that it's not, it doesn't get stuck to the countertop. Keep on stretching and rolling. Stretch and keep on rolling. Just like this. Now, you might be familiar with this shape because this is the shape that you usually find on the internet or on Instagram when you have a look at the, um, at the sourdough, uh, especially the stiff sourdough starter. Now that we had, that we did this, and our sourdough is stretched, it's rolled, and it has its shape, you wanna take a knife and you wanna make an incision on top of it, like a cross, like this, and like this. This will facilitate our sourdough to be open like a flower. Almost, this will facilitate our sourdough to open like a, as if it was blossoming. And this has another, um, and there's another reason why you want to do this as well. Uh, by doing this, if you cut some pieces within the dough, you're going to be able to have a look at uh, the different layers created by the dough. Now, a big difference here, so let's move it to the container. Let's push it to the bottom as much as you can. Not that much because we want to preserve uh, the, uh, the shape that we gave to it with, the, with these tips, just like that. And now a big difference compared to the past is that of course we're going to apply our, our, our rubber band, but uh, this time, so first of all, apply the rubber band just like that to where the level of the sourdough starts, so not considering the tips. And uh, another thing that we want to do here, or we want to not do anymore, is basically we're not going to use any um, any cling film anymore because the air, which is obviously in your in your sort of environment or which is in uh, in the proofing chamber where you're going to keep your sourdough is already going to create, it's going to oxidize this side here and it's going to create some sort of crust, which is more than useful to protect our sourdough from external agents anyway. So you don't need any more protection in here. The crust that is going to be created at the top it will facilitate uh, the sourdough, uh, it will protect the sourdough overnight. From now on, everything changes. So we want to do two feedings per day, alternating and splitting the feedings between night and day. During the night, we, we're gonna need to move our sourdough starter in a cooler environment. So what I usually suggest, since you wanna keep the temperature at 16 or 18 degrees, uh, if you have it, you can move it into a wine cellar, which uh, cools down, but, it, but it's not a fridge, so it doesn't reach that uh, lower temperature as a fridge does. You want to keep it at a, at a low temperature of 16, 18 um, degrees. In order to do that, you might move it to uh, a room which doesn't have any heating if you are during the winter, or a room which is a little bit dark, like a, a cellar or something like, like that. It's important to follow this process at this time. You want to keep it overnight to rest for 16 hours at the temperature of 16, 18 degrees Celsius. Sourdough is not ready at this time, so do not store it in the fridge because that would kill completely the fermentation at this stage. We are going to be we are going to be able to move it to the fridge and to store it in the fridge when uh, the sourdough will be ready, when it will be active enough. So now, what uh, instead you you want to do is to keep it at a, at a cool temperature to slow down a little bit the fermentation. But you also don't want to keep it at a warm temperature because as you as you can see right now, the sourdough is moving much, much faster compared to how it was moving 
before. It's uh, doubling in size, it's tripling in size, and uh, much, much faster compared to how it was doing before. The sourdough has a life cycle that you can measure by observing the doubling and the tripling in size. When the sourdough triples in size, it has reached the end of its life cycle. Beyond that point, it will start collapsing. We should avoid uh, feeding our sourdough when it has reached the collapsing phase because we would feed a compound which is very acidic where the, good where the effect of the good bacteria is no longer present we would feed a compound which is about to die To avoid this phase, at night we're going to store it in a cool place, in a cool environment dry and cool environment in order to slow down the fermentation overnight until the next morning when we're going to be able to feed it again. And the next feeding we do, we are gonna do it as usual, but the only difference is that uh, since I told you that you have to split the feedings in uh, between night and day, during the day, you're gonna feed it. You're gonna feed your sourdough after it rested for uh, 16 hours or 16, 18 degrees Celsius. But this time you're gonna store it, you're gonna keep it at a temperature of 28 degrees. So in a very, very warm. And you're going to feed it again once it has tripled in size. One thing that I recommend is to not let it go in the collapsing phase to avoid the acidity. So as a recap, night and day. At night, you wanna, after the feeding, you want to keep, you want to store your sourdough in a cooler environment to keep it at 16, 18 degrees Celsius for 16, for 16 hours. The next day, during the day, after the feeding, you want to keep it at a temperature of 28 degrees. We need to repeat this process twice per day until our sourdough reaches its stability. So how do you know when just the sourdough is stable and is ready to be used for whatever uh, recipe you want to use? Well, we are going to recognize our sourdough when it's ready because after the, the day uh, feeding, when you're going to move it in a, in a warm environment at 28 degrees, it's going to double in size, almost triple, um, in about three, three and a half hours. At that point, you can consider your sourdough to be ready to be born, essentially. So you have an actual yeast, natural yeast, that you can use to leaven, to prove whatever product of your choice. This concludes our sourdough masterclass. Obviously, you need to repeat this process for almost two weeks or one week until you reach basically one month from when you started. For some people, it's gonna be um, less than that. For some people, it's gonna be for other people, it's going to be a little bit more. It depends on the condition of the environment where you leave your, your sourdough to rest. And it depends on how you're feeding it and at the temperature that you're keeping it. But in general, after one month, you're, you're going to have an amazing stiff sourdough starter, which is ready to be used in every recipe. Thank you very much for watching my sourdough masterclass. Uh, as usual, you can find me on Instagram as Kneading with Franco. You can ask me any question, any anything you might need about the entire process of the sourdough. Thank you very much for staying with me. I'm gonna see you in a month when my sourdough will be finally ready so I can show you some actual recipe uh, with it. I'm undecided right now. Maybe I'm gonna make a pizza or a focaccia or uh, some bread. Thank you very much for staying with me. And uh, if you like this video, please drop a like and feel free to subscribe to my channel.